So I'm going to invite us all to take a little walk down memory lane to a date that at least some of us will remember. And that is March 11th, 1985. Now you may not remember the date well enough for it to stick in your mind, but the event, if you were uh, old enough to remember, it was probably pretty significant. On March 10th of that year, Konstantin Chernyenko, who had served for only 13 months as General Secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, had unexpectedly died. And on March 11th, Mikhail Sergeyevich Gorbachev, a young upstart, had been appointed in his place. Now Gorbachev came into office with his notions of She deserves. One heart is where it all started. The other thing worth noting is that she thought he was the gardener. Now, if you encountered somebody you had known and loved intensely for a certain chunk of your life, would you be likely to not recognize them? Probably not, unless unless a significant change had come over them, unless there was something so new and so unexpected about them that you didn't initially realize who it was that was standing face to face with you. So the resurrection was 
not an event that was published abroad and written across the skies of Jerusalem and sung by huge choirs of angels. No, it was a quiet little event that started in the turning of one single heart and a single heart that didn't even initially recognize what was happening. Well, we live in what could be called a somewhat troubling era. In our public life, I think it's fair to say that while for all of not just the history of this land, but the history of every land, there have been sharp differences of opinion on everything. And that that is normal and that working through that is simply a part of what it means to be human society. Now we seem to be looking at an era where we're dealing with just different sets of facts. Now different facts are much more tricky to work with than different opinions. That requires a whole new level of creativity whole new level of conversation. And then we look at life in the church. Well, life in the church looks pretty different than it did years ago, too. It seems harder to get people here because we're living in what a friend of mine referred to as a 31 society, the sum of 24 and 7. There's stuff going on all day, every day, seven days a week that's competing for our time and attention. And sometimes with very good reason. Um, the standard pattern of meeting together as church manages to get crowded out of that equation. And yet, meeting together as a community of faith to love and worship the risen Lord is just as significant today as it's ever been. So the question is, what does it look like to move forward from here in an Easter way. Well, I think it looks like that bold move that the Soviet newspaper made in 1985. What we publish, what we call to the forefront of our attention, what we say is most worthy of notice, is not that which has passed away, but that which is coming. And at this point, unfamiliar, and perhaps even a little scary to us. I have to imagine that Gorbachev was a little anxiety provoking to the establishment. And yet Pravda went out on a limb that day. And we know what happened in the subsequent years. What we are called to do today as a church and a society in response to the Easter miracle is exactly the same thing. Rather than looking backwards and lamenting the loss of the glory days, we all have our definition of what those glory days were, and it's easy to wallow in, in grief and concern over their passing away, but rather than doing that, we are instead invited to ask the question, who in our sphere is going to be the next Mary of Magdala? Who is going to be that one heart that comes face to face with a resurrected reality and one that very significantly is going to look so different from the old one that has passed away that at first it won't be recognizable. This is not the end for our society. This is not the end for our church. This is perhaps just a Holy Saturday moment. A moment where we have to sit in patience but in unconquerable hope with the fact that that which held us together in the past has gone away, but we know that on the third day something new and far more glorious and indestructible is on its way. I don't yet know what that resurrected reality is going to look like, but I am confident that it is on its way. I know for sure that if it follows the pattern of the gospel story, it's going to look very different from what has been in the past. It's going to require us to let go of the past. I also know that it is only going to be recognized by a few at first. It's only going to be recognized 
us by the Mary Magdalene's of the world, who have the heart to sit there at the tomb weeping, who have the patience and the courage to not be satisfied until they come face to face with the resurrected Christ. So whatever your glory days may be, whatever the things you're having a hard time letting go of, as you hear this Easter message that says, live as people who are dead to sin, but alive to God and Jesus Christ our Lord, realize what that means for you, is it's time to let go of it. And it's time instead to walk around the earth, maybe humming your favorite Easter hymn as often as you can remember to do so, and just wondering, when am I going to encounter it? When and where? Am I going to see that risen Christ who is at first unrecognizable and yet once I realize